Hello everybody, welcome to Percussion Axiom TV. I'm your host Tom Burritt and this is episode 79. We have just a quick show today. It's a rare Sunday show, uh, but I've been meaning to do it this week and it's been pretty crazy around here. Uh, and we do have an Axiom. I ran across something the other day that I want to share with you guys and I would love your thoughts about. But before we do, before we do that, just a big shout out and thank you to Dr. Julie Hill and Stephen Hughes who helped get me out to University of Tennessee at Martin. I was there about a week and a half ago, maybe a couple weeks ago, and just had an amazing time. Great things happening there and really hungry students and um, hungry for knowledge, that is. So just an awesome trip and, and had such a blast out there. Can't wait to see you guys again and thanks so much for inviting me out. Uh, we are a week now, a little less than a week away from one of the big weekends of uh, my year. Um, those of you who remember, last year we were getting ready to do John Luther Adams' uh, Inuk Suet for 99 percussionists uh, at, round, at the Round Top uh, Percussion Galore Festival. So April 9th coming up is our big festival this year. And so I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about what was happening for that. Um, our main guest artist this year is uh, Pedro Carnero. Pedro's coming into Austin today, and there's probably thirty or 40,000 feet in the air as we speak. Um, Pedro is, of course, from Portugal, and he and I will be performing... Uh, um, part of Philip Manorese, the marimba duo from that. Um, <clears throat> and we will get uh, Pedro maybe on a, on a PATVX uh, uh, episode this week and definitely a Drum Chatter uh, podcast, so be looking for that. So we're super psyched to have him here. Um, so there's three concerts uh, on Saturday. The first one is a duo program. We've got some interesting themes to the, the concerts this year. And on that concert will be um, the... Uh, Michelle Schumann and Graham Francis duo. They're a local uh, Central Texas duo. They, they do some really cool stuff. They're doing an Arvo Park piece, or Arvo Parrot piece, and uh, Keith Jarrett work, and Belinda Reynolds play, which I've played before, and some Philip Glass. Um, I'm really interested about this program because um, it's got it's sort of a, a collage, the way I understand it, sort of constant flowing programs. It's very interesting. Michelle Schumann, by the way, is a fantastic pianist, is director of the Austin Chamber Music Center. Um, our very own Tony Edwards will be performing with Sarah Driver, who plays violin in the Austin Symphony. They're going to be doing um, Michael Colgrass's variation for four drums and viola. And to close the concert, we have the very famous, of course, Me and Perkins duo. And they're doing two world premieres by John Succo and Mac McBain. So that's the 1.30 concert. The 4 o'clock concert's all solos. That will feature uh, Lily Wen, a DM student here, playing some very interesting Grieg um, piano pieces on marimba. She plays them beautifully. Amazing. Uh, and then we have uh, Pedro Carnero playing um, some stuff. He's playing... Uh, what, is, what is Pedro playing? Pedro is playing... Um, music... A piece by Court Leap. Music for Snare Drum and Computer and uh, Nishimura Kama from three fragments of Paya for solo marimba. That's Pedro's program. I'm going to be playing um, a couple Stephen Barber chorales and John Seri's ground lines. And the piece after the intermission, the concert will finish with uh, James Dick, the founder, pianist of Round Top. He'll be performing um, with us on the Concerto for Piano and Percussion Orchestra by Gillingham. Did that two or three years ago, and it's a great piece. So that's the solo program, which starts at um, 4.30, or is it, no, 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock. Then the evening concert is an all-French percussion program um, that will feature line upon line percussion, playing the Jolivet Suite en Concert with Francois Minot on flute, and uh, Etude Choreographique by Maurice Ohana, which is a, a sort of an interesting find. We should probably do another show on that, because it's a very interesting piece, um, uh, by a well-known French composer, at least in France, that is. Uh, and, then the, and then the big finale is the Philippe Manerie Book of Keys, 25-minute um, work, six in that we built. That's going to be UT percussion on that program. So, anyway, if you follow the show, especially if you live in the San Antonio, Austin, and maybe even Dallas area, please consider coming down. Um, should be a you know a very rare opportunity, especially that evening concert to hear an all of all French percussion ensemble program and some great performances throughout the day. The Marimba Band will also perform in the chapel, which is a free thing at 3:15. Um, that's a perfect setting for that music. And uh, that's always fun. And the Steel Pan Ensemble will be performing for a dinner um, that you can uh, purchase tickets for. Uh, the food there is amazing, and I highly recommend that. So, big weekend. Uh, more from Pedro, and uh, we're going to have a great time. Um, so, enough about that stuff. Thank you guys for um, 
uh, just listening to me talk a little bit about that. You know, if you guys love the show, I really hope you'll consider supporting me and, and you know, trying to get all this information out to you with all these axioms and, and um, just hoping that you can come check out some of the stuff that we've worked so hard to prepare for you. <laughs> all right. Today's axiom is this. Record numbers watch YouTube Symphony Orchestra grand finale stream. Um, grand finale of YouTube's Symphony Orchestra 2011 was streamed 33 million times in 189 countries. 33 million times. I read that number and I just, my draw dropped. I think it beat out, I think it's the, the biggest live stream of any event ever. Ever. Um, this was the three and a half hour concert that was held in Australia's um, Sydney Opera House on March 20th, so very recently. Um... It was streamed to nearly one and a half times the entire population of Australia where the event took place, and 2.8 million mobile live streams. Um, so it's it, making it one of the biggest ever streaming events to date on mobile and desktop. So that just blows my mind. You know, we've talked on this show and at Drum Chatter here and there about uh, the future of classical music, and you know, this probably isn't that, but it's something that we should look at. And so I'm curious what you guys think about this. What does this mean? You know. Um, how does this happen, and, and what is it? What, what impact is it going to have on us as musicians and artists, given how, how much the sort of traditional model of, of symphony orchestras is sort of failing right now in so many ways? You know, recently we had Detroit and now Syracuse, and there'll be, I'm sure there'll be more. So anyway, I would love your thoughts on that. What, do you, what does this all mean to you guys, you know, and to us as artists? So thank you guys so much for um, watching the show. Uh, hope you'll come out and support us if you're in the local Austin area. Um, I don't think there's any live streaming of this stuff, but uh, we'll we'll try to do some, um, not live blogging, but some sort of coverage of it while it's happening. So thank you guys so much for uh, watching the show, and please give me your thought, give me your thoughts about this YouTube Symphony Orchestra thing. It's just kind of blew my mind. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.